Alright, welcome to an Inmendum video production. Yeah, good enough. Uh, it may or may not be seen on the Do Not God channel eventually. Maybe. Probably not, though. Um, let me fix this text. Smash it over here. Maybe make it bigger. Sorry. This is why it's a presentation. It really wasn't a production. So I lied when I said it was a production. So I didn't produce it very well. So, anyway, uh, comments. I figure I'll read some comments. Uh, not on my video, but on uh, one of old fans about the interview thing. And um, so, just to paraphrase the interview, I was there to talk about ethelism and antinatalism in some form. Some form of um, either you get rid of the humans or you get rid of humans and animals because they're both corrupt and a mess and trapped in slop and stupid game they're playing. They're playing a stupid game. And uh, I thought that would be enough. <laughs> so those are enough for subjects. And instead the other guy wants to talk about all kinds of other social issues that humans have like you know they're too rapey or uh, they squander or, uh, you know, they're reckless. They might poison something somewhere and make a big mess and might do some other stupid things. Might crash their yacht into Manhattan and Manhattan will sink or something, you know. Yeah, I wasn't there to talk about all those stupid little th stupid things humans could do. I couldn't care less, really, because my end game is the end game. The only game. End the whole game, and then you don't have to worry about cleaning up any of the messes anymore. All the messes go away if you just get rid of the mess makers. That's the simple argument. And he refused to have that conversation. So there was nothing to talk about, really, because I didn't want to talk about, what if somebody points their flashlight into my eyes really brightly? I didn't want to talk about that. That's not really, I don't, I just, you know, it's not like I couldn't care less, I'm sure. This really is an issue. I mean, there are all these technologies out there right now, you know, Blu-ray lasers can blind people without them even knowing they got blind, <laughs> you know. Lots of dangerous technology out there, very dangerous. Um, yeah, and it's a, pff, another reason why we should go extinct is because technology is going to make it really impossible for us to disagree, and that means we're all going to have to be in cages, and you know, people don't want to deal with that reality. They all think, well, it's a conspiracy, and the government's going to control us. Well, yeah, the government's going to have to control you. Guess what? Because technology really is going to be very, very dangerous in the future. Little nanobots can be programmed to do all kinds of evil things. It's going to be a real mess. So we're better off dead. We're better off not existing. And that's the simple solution. And what's in the way? Oh, that's right. Making arguments about the subject. That's what's in the way. You have to make arguments and convince people. And that's really the job. And he doesn't want to do that job. He wants to do some other kind of crap. So anyway, that's why there was a dysfunctional conversation. There's no other reasoning. And um, these people are just bullshitters. So people with no content on their channel, Lagadi's unborn. So it's a, such a Lagadi is a serious depressive, and uh, but he has nothing to say, <laughs> yeah, on his own channel. Uh, anyway, I don't think Magnus <laughs> was given the respect of being able to finish his points. Uh, that's an absolute just insane lie. What were his points? I was trying to fish for them all through the interview. I'm trying to come up with his point. So you got this head in space theory that we're going to put a bunch of heads in space. And then I explained how, well, it's really expensive to put heads in space. And I really don't know why you think somebody's going to have some reason to do that. It's not a very good James Bond villain. The James Bond villain who wants to put a bunch of heads in space. Pig heads. Uh, you know, I, I was trying to get to his point, And I couldn't find any point. I couldn't search for it. I badgered him to find it, and I still couldn't find it. Even badgering him to find his point, I couldn't find his point. Because his point was non-existent. Because once I pointed out how, yes, antinatalism is a perfectly viable theory of mankind's doom and end, because right now we're almost already there. And I pointed that out, and he resisted the truth. But, I mean, obviously, he had to concede it, you know, eventually. Oh, yes, the real birth rates are down. That's a fact. That's also a fact that if the civilized world was the only world, we'd have already chosen extinction. It is a fact. Even with huge subsidies to have babies, people aren't having enough babies. It is a fact. Um, so this is all just crap.
<laughs> you know, these people are just so lame. Anyway, um, so, so, you know, this, this, I can point out right from the beginning of the interview, I sat there for like three minutes just listening to go on and on and on and on and on and on about crap that I can't, you, nobody could out untangle the crap and figure out what the fuck he was talking about for three fucking minutes. And then I try to get back to the subject. What does this have to do with anti-nihilism? Well, the, the head's in space. What? <laughs> you know, the head's in space. Anyway, whatever. Uh, anyway, so just a pile of crap. He had plenty of time to talk, plenty of time to articulate how all these other problems are so much more important, how everybody should focus their energy on stopping human beings from doing, I don't know, ink, ink experiments because the ink could get out of control. Anyway, um, just crap. Anyway, it didn't seem like Gary wanted to have a rational discussion. No, I wanted a rational discussion. There was no foundation for it because he did not want to talk about antinatalism or ethelism. Those two subjects he had no interest in because he thought those are futile conversations. They don't mean anything because it can't happen. And clearly I pointed out, of course, it can happen. And there are really interesting subjects because there's different ways of persuading people, different kinds of arguments to use, like, you know, the argument from there's no consent. <laughs> you know, there's lots of very good arguments to make. All right. It didn't seem like, especially now with you know, this whole virus thing, just shows how vulnerable we are to some sort of little tiny thing causing big, huge catastrophes in terms of destroying our whole economy. Uh, you know, exposing all of us as being completely useless to the rich and therefore disposable. I mean, all these things will be revealed through this process. That life on Earth isn't about living things. <laughs> it's just about winners, people with the money. Uh, anyway, uh, it doesn't seem like Gary wanted to have a rational discussion as much as he wanted to dominate and talk over Magnus. Well, it's just a lie. Okay, I mean, you can't put together any of these clips showing me talking over him beyond to ask him, what are you talking about? What do you mean by that? It can't happen. You can't say it can't happen when clearly the evidence indicates it can happen. I mean, I should just let him say stupid things that aren't true, right? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> I should let him imply that Japan's birth rate is hugely increased and there's, there's going to be a huge population explosion in Japan when he has no right to imply that because it's not fucking true. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, you know, just lie. Okay. Um, talk over Magnus. He didn't. Dot, dot, dot. So, again, all I can say is, is what kind of despicable person are you? Whose side are you on here? You're obviously not an anti-natalist or an ethelist. If you're one of those two things, you'd say, why was Magnus talking about all these other subjects instead? Why was he talking about worrying about whether people are going to, you know, chap their fingers you know playing too much pool or something why was he talking about all these other stupid problems that come with civilization when the whole point of anti-natalism or ethelism is to bury civilization just to bury the whole thing it's a smelly corpse we're just going to bury it we're not going to sit there and play around and say well what if it turns into a liquid and spreads across the entire universe no that's not what we're going to worry about we're just going to bury it Anyway, Grace, men create so much drama. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hilarious. I mean, really hilarious in the sense of you want to go find drama, you know where you go. Look, up a skirt. Oh, that's drama right there, even just saying it. Uh, thank you for your efforts. To protect yourself <coughs> legally, you could get upcoming guest to sign a release. I mean, there's no legal thing here at all. There's no chance he could, number one, prove a single damage. Nobody nobody slandered him or, or you know, edited out his responses or in any way forced him in any way to continue or to say the crap he said. So he has no legal ground for any kind of claim because he can't claim a damage of any kind. <laughs> It's just idiotic. All right. Is the Cabrera interview coming soon? Well, that's not terribly interesting. To be fair, less forceful speakers could be given more talk time. What the fuck could that possibly mean? I didn't even say fuck in the interview, you know. I mean, I don't think much. Um, <clears throat> so what a pile of crap. What, what does forceful mean? What, what are you even talking about? 
what what kind of interview do you want to see? Different ideas or people just have the same ideas and say, yeah, blue is really a good color. Oh, yeah, I think blue is really nice and special. Also, blue is very special. Do you have any other special words you would like to specially call blue just while we're doing this specially blue thing? Oh, yeah, well, I think it's fantastic also. Yeah, fantastic. Blue is fantastic color. That That's what you're interested in, huh, asshole? You're an asshole. <laughs> really. Uh, no joy in life. Well, whatever. No brains in head. Uh, still love the podcast and all that you do. Well, that's very kind of you to say that about the old fan. But who knows what the fuck you're talking about half the time either. Right? Anyway, it doesn't matter. Whatever. I don't get this. He was sensible person in the interview. So this is a guy saying... See, these people can't even write a sentence where he could say he could even put Magnus's name in there when he says he. Magnus was the sensible person in the interview, and he was sensible how? How was he on the subject of antinatalism? What did he say on the subject of antinatalism in the entire interview that was at all, uh, should be at all interesting to an antinatalist, except it's impossible. It won't happen. Did he say anything else pro-antinatalism before? Besides saying it's impossible, it never happened. Was there any other contribution he made to the subject of antinatalism besides to say you're wasting your time? No, and that's not very positive, is it, asshole? No, it isn't. Oh, amazing! These people are so fucking dumb. All right, so he says again to his own comment. Uh, I can't give you the summary. I can give you the summary. Straw man, straw man. Yes, yes, Magnus said the word straw man. And what was the straw man? Me pointing out clearly the distinction between what I think an antinatalist and an ephilist is and what he thinks one is. He thinks ephilists are, I'm going to go out and try, and try to make human beings more decent. And I think they should behave decenter. I think the rich people should share some of their money. And, um, you know, I, I, I think we ought to all sit down and try to have a conversation with poor people and, you know, explain to them how, you know, doing drugs isn't really good for you. And, you know, you have to take responsibility when you do that little pregnancy thing. You know, you have to take it kind of seriously. It's not just balloons and crack for everybody. You know, you have to you have to have a little bit of worry about taking care of the little critter because, you know, it, they can be vulnerable and you, bullshit. I mean, this has nothing to do with this subject. So again, these people are just these fakers sitting there pretending to be something so everybody thinks those things are assholes. It's almost like these really wacky feminists. It's almost like they're a plant. You see them already, right? You see them in, in the sense of the race war and different other wars where you see people who are actually trying to behave as if they are anti-something when they're pro-something, right? And they're just doing it to make the pro-people look stupid. Well, that's what these people are. These people are not on the side of the suffering preventers, obviously, because their entire goal is to find some reason to take our finger off the trigger and not shoot the gun and blow the thing up. We have Hitler in our gun sights, and they're trying to distract us so we don't shoot Hitler. Shit, I mean, it's so obvious. But there, there was no straw man. There was the two of us sitting there having the conversation. I mean, well... What was the straw man? Could you name the straw man? Could you just articulate a quote that was a straw man quote? He's obviously not an anti-natalist, and he's clearly not an ephilist. He clearly doesn't think the answer is to stop it. He thinks the answer is to do something else to it, like give it a better suit of clothes to wear. Oh, shit. All right. Just another YouTuber who's a complete fucking idiot. Let's see, but he actually gets it right this time. Wow. He doesn't want to do shit but naysay and, and sell his books. You laborized, lobotomized, okay, lobotomized twat. That he, that's why he backpedaled because he knew he looked totally dumb. Well, I mean, obviously I made him look like the con artist he was when he's trying to sell this idea that population is going to increase again. When, no, the evidence is it's de the decrease is real. People grow up and they see the, the drama of family. They see the mess of it. And they see in their own life how I'm going to be treated like shit. 
And the only way to win in this society is to create a bunch of losers. I have to exploit people. I have to do all kinds of disgusting things to win. They see lots of problems with the game we're playing. And it's a fact that they realize, why the fuck would I introduce somebody new into this game? Especially when I can't guarantee a damn thing, even my own employment. So there's lots of good reason for somebody to have pause about just stepping into this stupid traditional value crap. Um, and obviously God is, you know, the corpse. God's corpse is still sitting here as a mountain, the big giant mountain of dumbass. Oh, that is d God's fucking corpse. But religion is dead to anybody with half a fucking brain. I mean, just really, this, realistically, all you need is about half your brain, all right, to figure out God is a silly fucking fable. It has nothing to do with the truth. It just has to do with another con. Um, <clears throat> so there's lots of reasons to recognize. And, and this propagandist is trying to sell this counter argument that is a fallacy that there is some intimate danger that human beings are going to populate all over the place it really isn't happening the only people breeding are the dumbest people on this planet fact okay i don't really agree with the <clears throat> the way that gary can't tolerate any hint of disagreement there was no it wasn't a hint of disagreement we weren't talking about the same subject. I, again, I was there to talk about antinatalism and ethelism and the pathway to success on those two subjects. Ending the game, not modifying the game. The subject of antinatalism isn't, let's get to replicating birth rates. Let's have continuous human existence. Antinatal, if that's what antinatalism is, just birth control, you know, reducing, you know, limiting population. It's not about reducing it or going extinct it's just about limiting it so it's zero population growth or something it's a completely different movement that you've put this word antinatalism on it for some reason you're either against the risks of birth or you're for the risks of birth it's it's there's there's no middle ground that's rational to the word so what side are you on you fucking lunatic you idiot you're not a lunatic you're an idiot okay so his debates tend to go off the rails a bit. Where how how is I off the rail? I'm pointing out how it's clearly a winnable argument because we're already almost there and we haven't even started to argue yet. We haven't even started to talk to the human race. <clears throat> a tiny percentage of the human race has heard the, the even even heard of the concept of being anti-life. Tiny percentage. We haven't even started and we almost won. <sighs> You people are so fucking stupid. So his debate tends to go off the rails a bit. Yeah, so how was I off the rails? What, what, where did I cite the, the misinformation? Where was I trying to promote a truth that isn't true? However, <clears throat> Gary is the most rational person out there as far as antinatalism is concerned. Well, I'm, I'm the only rational person on all the other fucking subjects, too. He's just... I don't know what dot 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 what the fuck does that mean you can't type more words or something i mean there's no more button here anyway <clears throat> uh, i guess you agree with the floating pig heads in space i don't know so so i guess i, yeah, I don't know what the, the point is but all of the analogies that i was look i gave him a simple argument right so i i, I provided the audience with a way to understand this by pointing out how would you fix malaria? And I've given the argument to other people on how would you fix the feral cat problem or all these other problems. And there's a simple truth. You have to decide. You can't have it, you know, I'll spend 25, 30% on Band-Aids and 30% on a cure and 30% on prevention or whatever. You can't do it that way. You're not going to win that way. Um, and, and so this is, you know, but, you know, there's a decision to make. And what what are you really investing in? So if you're not if you're investing in failure, then yeah, I don't see really the point in you. Okay, if you're a band aid knitter, you're not going to do the world any favors because every band aid you knit, you know what they do with that band aid? They end up making a baby out of it. Any way you help the poor and disenfranchised and all that crap, the more likely it is they're just going to pop a baby in your face for it and tell you to pay for it. I mean, that's all you're going to get for it. So, yes, in this case, 
especially in the case of the human race, the only thing to invent to, to invest in is the prevention. Go for the prevention. All the way, hundred uh, percent. Just like with malaria, go all the way. Spend all the money on preventing the future from ever having to worry about it. Stop the band-aid factories by giving them no use anymore. All right, anyway, to the stupid turtle fuck again. <clears throat> Gary is the most rational person holding anti-natalist views? Question mark. Here are some of the positions Gary's not <clears throat> willing to subject to rational scrutiny anymore. So that's just a lie that I'm unwilling to uh, uh, make a point and argue the point. Look, the only thing here is lots of people have opinions, but all there really is that matters are arguments. So all this opinion crap doesn't mean anything. So make an argument that I said something or I did something and then prove I did do that. But all you misparaphrasers and liars do is make some kind of crack like, oh, are you straw man? No, there's no straw man. Show me the straw man. Uh, you know, prove your fucking accusations, you weak asses. All right. <clears throat> the objective values, that objective values exist. I'm saying quite overtly to you, I have compiled a ton of evidence, okay, that sensations come in two forms. Really, really bad and really, really good. And I've done that through 60 years of experiencing consciousness. And there's no argument you can make to me except to say that you're not conscious the way I am, that you don't share this evidence at all. It's not your evidence that there's two insanely different kinds of sensations and their difference is entirely value. The value, the negative value of having a nail in your eye versus the positive uh, value of eating cupcake. And cupcake can be a girl's name, of course. Um, yes, and those two things have exceedingly different value. Okay? Yeah, and that the value is all in the idea of a positive and a negative. Uh, uh, something to do over and over again and something never to do again. And that that's the origin of value. Now, dissect that statement into some kind of evidence where you've proven my personal experience to be invalid. That you're saying I'm crazy or stupid or deluded to think that having pleasurable sensations is better than having unpleasant sensations. Where have you proven that anywhere? Where have you shown one shred of evidence that it is not something happening to every other human and happening to every one of the sentient mammals? That they have what are called good days and bad days. Days worth doing over again, days worth never doing again. And it's a fact. Now have you any evidence indicating how that stream of logic, proven by all of our personal experience, is in any way flawed. No, you won't make an argument. You'll just type this crap and as if he didn't, he didn't demonstrate it with a logical argument. No, I made an incredibly good argument, an incredibly solid argument. The argument from, I'm personally experiencing consciousness. I know what it does, because I'm personally experiencing it, you fucking dumbass. And if you can say honestly to yourself that you don't care, all right, that if somebody mails you a nail in your eye or they mail you a cupcake, you don't care which one you get. <laughs> if you can honestly say that, then you're a, fu well, you're a fucking liar <laughs> or a, you're a psychotic lunatic. So you're done. You're cooked. You're, you're just full of shit to even bring this up as if it's a complex question. The fact that we can logically prove the existence of good and bad by just pointing to our own conscious experience is an overt fact that can't be denied. I mean, Sam Harris argued this in the value landscape, in the moral landscape. I mean, what, you're just going to deny that if, if somebody had to vomit every 42 seconds and they had to do that for years, that it's a fate worse than death? <laughs> you know, you're just going to deny it? then, yeah, it should be imposed on you. God, you should get that. You deserve it. You deserve, you so richly deserve to be fucking tortured if you can honestly say you can't figure out the difference between the 
pleasurable sensations and the bad sensations. You don't know which one is which. All right. <clears throat> Uh, and that these are uh, pain and pleasure. Yes, it's quite obvious. Um, these aren't very good words for things. It's all just a, 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 you know how much bliss you're really in. You know how comfortable you are. There's comfortable and uncomfortable. There really isn't pain and pleasure. But anyway, that objective moral. So he's going to say the same thing twice, which is funny. <laughs> okay, that objective moral truth. So these aren't moral statements. They're just rational statements about our reality. We live with the concept of value because we experience sensations that are overtly valuable. It's built into them. The sensations are intrinsically good and bad. If I just take the neurons that are involved in creating intense pain and I take away all my other understanding, all my other neurons, and just have that arrangement floating in space, it would be a bad thing if somebody made a bunch of those things that just felt intense pain and that's all they did. They didn't think about, uh, you know, vacations in Barbados or something. They didn't think about anything lovely or wonderful or any of that crap. They just had intense pain. And somebody just kept manufacturing one of those with a little wheelie machine. They just manufactured little, little pain uh, neuron clumps. You wouldn't be able to call that a bad thing. You're not smart enough to figure out that would be a bad thing. You know, essentially just turning a wheel and pushing out animals that just got hit by a car and are dying. You know, all mangled up. Intense pain. And you would just you would just keep creating them and pushing them out into the universe and you think that would be a good thing. Or some sort of neutral behavior. Nobody should say that's a bad idea. Nobody would have reason, good reason, to say, stop. You're a liar. I can prove you're a liar by just making you the victim. All right, anyway. Um, that objective moral truths exist and that we have a responsibility to reduce suffering of the sentient being. So this, this asshole is sitting here on defending... Uh, um, <clears throat> what's his name again, uh, Magnus, in a sense, in this conversation. And that's exactly what Magnus believes. Magnus doesn't believe what you believe. He believes that, yes, it is a fact that reducing suffering is a good. He doesn't have any doubt about that. So why do you think it's doubtable? I mean, you know, there was no disagreement between me and Magnus about reducing suffering. We're just the approach is all we're talking about. I think you do it through eliminating the problem. He wants to spend the rest of his life cleaning up messes. I want to end the mess maker. The sentient organism. Okay. When challenged on those two views, he just resorts to saying words like logic. Well, it's, it's sort of an important word. I'm just putting the facts together. And the facts are... I'm experiencing consciousness for 60 fucking years on planet Earth. I, I have a right to testify to what I have learned through experiencing it for 60 years. Uh, intelligence, well, that's a damn good word, actually. You don't have any respect for that word, knowledge. Um, mathematics, where did I use that? So, <laughs> I, I think math is you know, sort of bullshit. Uh, it's, a, it's a crappy shortcut. Draw a real picture. Yeah, don't give me a mathematical model of, uh, you know, a car. Draw the picture. Our value equation. What, what do you think is more relevant than that? You don't think there's a value equation that would exist if you did identify value to exist, that there would be an equation in terms of balancing scales, that you could figure it out, that if there's six people in the future that are going to do the same thing you're going to do once in the present, that logically, whether it's a good or a bad, the six are, you know, adds up to more than one. You know, Spock even said it, right? The the needs of the many outweigh the needs of the one. You know, blah 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 blah. Not a complex thing. You're gonna put. You're gonna you're gonna ridicule Spock. <laughs> yes. yes, he was. Can you know, variably logical. I must concede. He never really gives a rationale. Yeah, I do. I have over and over again. So it's just not a lie. 
um, <clears throat> as to how those moral values, so again, I never call them moral values, I just call them values, and I say they're explicitly provable. And there's no way for you to ever, 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 okay, well, there's very little likelihood that you're going to come up with some convincing argument to explain to me how I have it wrong, that I don't understand how bad pleasure is and how good pain is. I just don't understand what a great feeling it is to have a nail in your eye. It's really fun, and I'm, I'm being fooled, but I don't realize the funness of it. <laughs> yeah, you're not going to have any chance of making that argument, because it's not true. There are decidedly different actual facts in the universe. All right, all right. <clears throat> um, have an objective basis. They have a rational, logical, factual basis. And it's consistent with all the other honest humans on Earth will testify to the same thing. They will testify that they know what pain is. They know what negative sensations are. Um, and we have a lot of ones in common. And that's why I can say nail in the eye, because there might only be six people out of eight billion people on Earth who might say, oh, I kind of like that sensation of the nail poking a hole in my eye. And, you know, I like hammers on my testicles. It's, it's, it's kind of cool. There's not too many people going to say that's a good time. So it's a common experience. We all have it. And only insane, psychotic, loop de doo crazy fucks would sit there and waste any time talking about how it's not a factual truth. So I don't know what your objective is. Again, why are you here? You don't like a conversation about um, value having something to do with understanding what suffering is and what pain is and recognizing you don't waste it ever. You can't understand that? I mean, this guy isn't a friend of nobody on this board should find any sympathy with this sadistic, cruel, nihilist lunatic. Okay, uh, I'm not denying that they could be objectively true. Yes, you are. What else are you doing? You're pretending I didn't just make a very good argument in defense of the fact of it, that sensations are factually, intrinsically, have a quality. And if I just separate the sensation engine and put it somewhere in a jar, I put pain in a jar, a little, you can even include the spinal cord if you want, and a little bit of gray matter, and it's just having pain, that 99.99% uh, of humans would say, don't make more of that. <laughs> That's not a good thing. Can't you find something else to do with your time, like bashing your own brains in instead of making that? useless, unnecessary suffering? They all would get it. All right. But one has to make an argument. Yes, right. Again, I have for it and not simply assert it. So this is, again, just a, a preposterous lie. I make these hour-long videos, hours and hours, of attempting to explain evolution, explain some of these functions of the brain and all this stuff. So I, these aren't ungrounded or unformed arguments where I just say to you, you must believe that sensations are important. Now I explain why they're important and why your experience demonstrates how they're important and that this really isn't about us and them kind of crap. Of course I care more about me because I feel my feelings. So obviously if I can't feel somebody else's pain it's easy to ignore it. And that's all it is. I've made the simple argument. If we could actually feel everyone else's pain okay if we had to endure feeling the pain of the slaves when we were the slave owners being rich and privileged wouldn't be fun anymore would it and so they'd have to stop mistreating the slaves or they couldn't have any fun in their life anymore could they and that's a tr that's the simple fact and that's the reality and that's why slavery is wrong is because you can know it's a negative condition you're creating. You're creating more harm for not sufficient good. And you'll know it if you could put all of those, all of that consequence in one bucket, then you could tell what color it is. And the color sucks. The color is suck. Okay. 
Not simply asserted. Oh, you're just such a weasel. Okay, this is especially funny because he always talks about the ABCs. So, yes, no God, evolution. So, again, these are things that somehow are not productive conversations. What's your point again? What are you arguing for? Uh, but he seems to miss that with no God, the objective bias for his value system, no altruism or <clears throat> our example is gone as well. So this isn't even a rational sentence. So he thinks God makes value. And that if you don't have a God, there's no value in the universe. So that's his assertion. If God doesn't tell me what is good and bad, I can't figure it out in the universe. By just showing up in the universe, I can't figure it out. Even though I'm a sentient organism and I have feelings, I can't figure out what's a good feeling and a bad feeling? Of course I can. I, I mean, how stupid can this asshole be? The only thing the only thing God eliminates is all these lies about what's valuable. That it's valuable to go to heaven. <laughs> you know, and it's bad to go to hell. Those fake, those fake stories about what we should value. We shouldn't be valuing going to heaven. We shouldn't be value winning the gold medal. That's my whole point. All these things we value are actually negative things. They're causing things pain, just like the people laughing and enjoying watching the bull getting killed in the bull ring. Those people are doing something very negative in their function. And that's the same as a god. A god is a sadistic lunatic who wants to keep forcing things to do shit that there's not going to be good for them. That's going to cause them great uh, suffering. It just squanders it. He wastes it uh, in, in insane amounts, especially in nature, as the point is made. So, so what sense does this make? But he seems to miss that with no god, the objective basis for his value system and I don't know, so altruism, for example. <laughs> so uh, my value system has in it something called altruism? No, it doesn't. It just has rational arguments. I, I mean, again, the, the person being altruistic, I've pointed out many times, they still have to convince the ape that it's in your best interest. I mean, the altruism is still tainted by some notion of being honorable or being proving that you're a man, you know, proving something, uh, gaining some sort of sense of dignity. Uh, I can still look myself in the mirror even though I blew my chest open with a grenade, uh, you know, by jumping on it. Um, but so I, so I never say altruism is gone. I mean, quite obviously, it still takes a great deal of courage to jump on the grenade. Uh, and. Um, so it shouldn't be diminished as an event because you have to selfishly do it. <laughs> you know, you have to make your gorilla jump on the grenade. But I made these arguments. So this is just such horseshit. So somehow he says all value disappears because there's no God to tell us what to do or how to think or how to add up these simple equation that pain is bad and doesn't matter. I mean, the simplest of arguments I can make, right? I mean, if I have a broken leg or you have a broken leg or he has a broken leg, it doesn't matter. It's the same bad, no matter whose brain it's in. The bad is the bad thing. It doesn't matter who it's happening to. It's clearly bad. I know it's bad. All right? I can't. It clearly, I'm going to feel it so much different. It's so much different if I have it for me. But it's not different as an event in the universe. And that can be understood by us. We can't. We can't experience it that way, but we can know better. And we can know better. That's a phrase you can't figure out, right? Oh, man, this is so bad. I mean, I didn't realize how bad it was till I actually read this shit. <laughs> this is really shit. Okay, in his podcast, whatever that is, I don't have a podcast, but anyway, he claimed that life most certainly didn't evolve anywhere else in the universe. Now, I never claimed that. I said the odds against it are insanely preposterous and likewise the dimensions of the universe are likewise insanely big um, but there's absolutely no reason to think it must happen and I've clearly pointed out that the odds of it happening all the one-time events and I've gone through some of them I've only gone through a small portion of the one time the one neuron the the, the nucleic cell the <clears throat> um, 
can't remember what the other one was uh, off the top of my head. But anyway, there's all kinds of these things that only happen once. There's only one form of DNA that turned into a replicating molecule. That is a membrane with a DNA molecule that was every, able to replicate the membrane and the molecule. It only happened one time. Even though there's all these amino acids just covering the surface of the Earth, there's no example of some new form of life forming somewhere. And again, that goes for all the thinking life. All the thinking life or the sentient life is based on the same neuron. It only happened one time. No marsupial, no, well, the marsupial is the wrong example, no, no whatever um, worm, um, you know, developed a, a, a different neuron no sponge let's say it's all the same one asshole and so so I can just point out how we're doing the experiment we've had trillions of permutations here on earth we've done the experiment over and over and over and over trillions of times a day the experiment is being done so it's just an, a huge number of permutations of attempting this experiment of make making a cell go inside another cell and stay alive it's going happening right now. The the little cells in the ocean in different places are doing it right now. They're trying to redo that experiment, and they've never been able to do it successfully. So the evidence is pretty clear that there's absolutely no reason to to think that because we won this lottery, this high odds against it, incredibly high odds against it, and we can demonstrate that by the experiments conducted right here on Earth gives us plenty of knowledge to know it's very rare chemistry. The fact that we can't duplicate any of it also proves that even with all our knowledge and technology, we can't make any of these things happen on purpose. Um, we can't synthesize it. Um, this is all really good evidence that notions that life just happens. All I need to do is mix a little carbon with a little bit of water and all of a sudden I'm going to poof a living creature with a brain is preposterously unlikely. All right, anyway, that's what I say. Um, <clears throat> uh, without ever having calculated the real probability. So how would you even go about that with the Drake equation? It's just made up numbers. And I'm arguing the Drake equation completely ignores the facts that I just articulated. The fact that there's no other example of a different DNA molecule. There's no example of a different um, absorbed nucleus. There's no example of some other mechanism besides neurons creating intelligence. These are, those are just three. Three of what could be 500 one-time events. So how do you measure the probability? First, you don't even know how many improbable events there are, and then you don't even know how improbable they are. So clearly, I'm just arguing it's clearly rare. It's not common chemistry. You just don't throw carbon and water into a vial and poof, there's a human being. All right. Uh, taking account for the size of the known universe. And again, how does the size of the new universe change the equation when you point out something like um, throwing five dice and having the five dice stack on top of each other? Because I could argue that physics almost makes it impossible. That, yes, you might be able to get three to stack on top of each other, but the physics won't give you enough energy to even get the fourth and fifth one to ever get on top of the other dice. So it can't fucking possibly happen realistically. And I would argue that we're in that kind of improbable zone. That's how improbable all these one-time events stacked on top of each other are. It makes us quite implausible as a theory. Okay, we're theoretically implausible. We're so far from being common. I would appreciate a video where he does this calculation. Well, again, you can't. There's no calculation to do. You either get that it's insanely rare chemistry or you don't. And the rest of it takes care of itself. There's other pieces of evidence. The other evidence is, is if you assume the universe is really old, um, then you know that this process, if it happened all the time, would have already happened in the universe many, many times, and that mm, some of those should have survived technology and should be 
zooming around in space doing all their wormhole bullshit. But they're not. So then you have to concede that the physical limitations of space... If you, can, if you think that they exist, these super intelligent beings, but they are in fact limited because physics won't allow them to go all over the universe and it's just a fact, you're conceding that fact, that limiting fact. Well, if that limiting fact is a fact, then you can't do anything to help them anyway. There's no reason for us to continue to exist to what? Share how to make peanut butter and jelly sandwich recipes with the aliens? What are we going to share with them? What are we going to do for them? We can't get to them. They're going to live and die before our message can even get sent to them. So this whole conversation is just a baby talk bullshit distraction. It has nothing to do with the subject. The fact that we are just a fucking fungus, a, a bacterial infestation on planet Earth, that's all we are. We're infecting it with something that's just causing a waste of pain. Just wasted pain creating silly little assholes who stick their little swords up and go, I won. This is probably some inheritance cunt who's never really done a day's work in his fucking life. Just inherited and says, well, my life is fine. He's clearly not anything close to sympathetic. He's a nihilist right off the bat, right? He's arguing against rational recognition that suffering be bad. Okay, he can't say that. He thinks that's a confusing question. That's doubtable. I can't figure it out. Sticking nails in things' eyes? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Is that bad, really? Who says so? <laughs> no, God doesn't tell me so. I can't figure it out for myself. <laughs> He's a fucking idiot. I don't know why am I even wasting my time? But there, there's more than one of these loonies out there. All right. Um, <clears throat> talking about account of size of the universe. It, I would appreciate a video where he does this calculation. Well, like I said, I, I, nobody can do the calculation explicitly. They can just point out, here's the evidence. The evidence that no aliens are sending messages. It's a, it's a real indication that there's nobody out there, buddy. They're not making enough noise. When you have technology, you make lots of noise. They're not making any noise. While I agree that it is practically ir <coughs> irrelevant, so here we go, amazing statement, right? So he knows it's practically irrelevant, but he's going to sit there and say, I somehow haven't made the... I haven't made the argument clear enough that uh, for all the people who are thinking that this is a subject, uh, us managing the universe and that's why humans need to exist because they need to manage the universe uh, I'm pointing out how that's an irrelevant distraction just that's a waste of your time okay if you're going to save smallpox right the smallpox virus you're going to save it in a little jar because you think well in the future we need it to kill Hitler that that's very dangerous if there is no Hitler in the future <laughs> You're, you're, you're walking around with smallpox in a jar um, and you're just creating the opportunity for your own destruction and it's to the, to the, to the detriment of the cause for a bunch of anti-natalists to think well, well maybe we could save something you know something special like just little kids with balloons in the park maybe we could save that no it's all dangerous and it's all gotta go Anyway, <clears throat> and about the suffering in a distant solar system, so he agrees there's no chance. Uh, he cannot simply claim that <clears throat> such things. Well, I didn't simply claim them. So you're just lying. I didn't make any absolute statement. I said, number one, I believe, and I also said, I, I'm just pointing out how it's, it's not a realistic concern. It's so improbable. Rolling the five Yahtzee dice isn't a realistic worry. If the five Yahtzee dice means your head blows up, you can go ahead and roll the dice because your head's not going to get blown off. Because it just isn't going to happen. All right. <clears throat> uh, posing an, a rational and scientific without providing them. Posing as rational and scientific. So, again, I made arguments from science from the fact that if the aliens were there, we'd already hear them, number one. And I made the argument from rare chemistry that were both very rational and scientific arguments. I wasn't posing. They're real arguments. I don't hear your counter-arguments. Okay, without, prov without proving them, what, what, what's the proof? 
they're facts. They've already been proven. There's no second form of DNA on planet Earth. You, you think there is and it's invisible or something? <laughs> or at least citing the source for that. I don't need a source for pointing out how you can't point to a single intelligent organism on planet Earth that doesn't have neurons in it. So go find the intelligent organism that doesn't have neurons. Okay, he could have just said <laughs> it is irrelevant and left it at that. It would have been fine with me. Well, who cares what's fine with you, Mr. No Content? Mr. Slander and recklessly say shit that isn't true. So this, the other guy says straw man. Well, here's the example of the straw man, right? I didn't say what he put, the words he put in my mouth. I made a clear argument from very rare, very improbable. Just like the pigs in space argument. I said overtly to the guy. Yeah, I don't think that's, he, and, and Megan has even admitted, well, it's, it's not very probable. Well, then why are, am I discussing it? Why, why am I wasting my time on something that's not very probable? We have real, overt, urgent problem, and I should waste my time on thinking about or worrying about some event that may never happen, when I'm quite certain of tomorrow's pain and suffering. Uh, that is a high school education will suffice for bringing about voluntary human extinction. Yes. I mean, obviously, you know, there's lots of people who have graduated college and they still believe in God. So there are exceptions to the rule. But what I'm just suggesting, that is, if you can get people high school educated, they're not likely to have a kid at 13 <laughs> if they're in school and doing all this other stuff, playing by the rules. Um, and... And, and it's already proven in India that, you know, the birth rate for the average woman who's high school educated is two point something children, and, you know, three maybe, and it's five or six for the one not high school educated. So there's simple statistical data out there to demonstrate the point that it works really well at just stopping uh, insanely stupid overpopulation. And again, I would argue that it also tends to make somebody capable of being exposed to more arguments in life and having purposes beyond replicating and being a mother and all this other crap. And so it does lots of positive things to make people more invested in their own existence than they are invested in forcing somebody else to pretend to live a meaningful life. And we're all just pretending. All right, anyway. Um, <clears throat> will suffice to bring about voluntary human extinction. That voluntary human extinction is even possible a realistic scenario. Well, again, so he's again arguing as if it's not already demonstrated by the evidence that nations are getting more and more desperate in having to create subsidies to force people to make, to, to, to encourage people to have more babies because people aren't doing it on their own. So again, what, what is your counter argument to that theory? What besides being invested in their own life and being knowledgeable about the risks of procreation, both financial and personal and just that it's dangerous, knowledge of those dangers and th thinking about it rather than just doing it, they're thinking about it. Isn't that the only thing that's stopping them is the fact that they've thought about it, right? And he thinks that's somehow unrealistic. We can't have people thinking about anything that won't happen in the future. People will think less and, you know, they'll be even more uneducated in the future. <laughs> yeah, right. Sure they will. See how he reached, I see how he reacted to Magnus bringing up that the fertility rates in Japan are rising again. So this is, so it's an overt lie. So, and, and what is he, is he going to make any kind of car? There's, I, I pointed out to Magnus, they're still under replacement population. They're still below replacement population. The fact that it it went down way below replacement and now has creeped up a little because Japan is actually paying people to have kids, right? The government's paying them to have kids. And like overtly, like you win the lottery if you have kids, you get five grand free money, you know, this kind of thing. They're they're getting so desperate to increase population because they want to do the whole social security thing. They get got all these pensioners. They have to pay for their retirement and they don't have any kids to go to work to do it. So that's the only reason why they're doing it. But it seems like a desperate effort. But they still haven't gone back into positive population. 
So they're still heading for extinction. That is the fact. And this asshole is saying, even though no one, no one thinks that 90% of the Japanese have become anti-natalists, or even 1% of the Japanese have become anti-natalists, they're already behaving as anti-natalists. So without even making the argument, without even having the political argument, and even in spite of huge subsidies to have kids, the argument for not having kids is winning. And this asshole says the truth is different, when clearly those are the facts, and you're the liar. You're the liar to imply that Japan's population is growing out of control or any such thing, or there's even, even the slightest threat that that's happening, or that it will happen. And that there's any reason why the real people living in Japan have any reason whatsoever to do uh, what is happening all over the civilized world, which is 50% of the people are choosing not to get married and not to have kids. That's the facts, and it's the education that's done it. It's the exposure to ideas that has done it. It's this very thing, these very kinds of conversations about the huge responsibility, the fact that they see it. You know, you don't have to watch too many, uh, even, even TV dramas are getting to it. You know, like Breaking Bad, what's the, what's the, what's the lessons and all on these kind of shows? Is that, yes, it's nice to think about being a maniacal king and real life actually sucks. Your real life as a dopey little school teacher is going to suck. It's going to suck. <laughs> you know, uh, you know, it's going to bore you out of your your brain space. It's going to be so bad, so tedious that this domestic living, this domestic silly life sucks. I mean, they're they're searching for video games where they can blow everything up, where they can shoot the fucking shit out of shit, where they can fuck things and do all kinds of irresponsible things because living a normal, simple, careful life is a big fucking drag. And that truth is sinking into the human organism. And, and uh, yeah, it's not as profound as having sympathy and recognizing that the animals are all being killed and tortured and it's horrible and awful. But a lot of people are, and the, the growth in the vegan movement is evidence that people are becoming more sensitive and more aware of the Holocaust that's all around us. So in, in every category, we're winning the argument, and here's another asshole trying to pretend we've already lost the argument. And you people don't beat the shit out of him. Instead, you give him three little thumbs up for this piece of shit comment. He gets three thumbs up, zero thumbs down. And you're, you're supposed to be the anti-natalist community is, is in this, these posts. These are anti-natalists, and they can't even figure out how this is a disgusting lie, not only about the arguments I've made, but about the truth of the statements I've made. We are winning. It's just a lie. See how he reacted when Magnus bringing up the fertility rates in Japan are rising again. Number one, they're not fertility rates. <laughs> okay, they're birth rates, fuckhead. <laughs> it's not about how fertile the people are. No, it's about how willing they are to have children. And again, the only reason why the rates went up is because they are just throwing money at people to have babies in Japan. Throwing money at them. You want a free lunch in Japan? Say, I like being pregnant with Japanese babies. Go there and be a surrogate mother. They'll love you. I mean, they'll pay you you know, and you'll be living in the penthouse. Okay. All right, well, this is so much to get through. It's a, okay, now you're just making stuff up about me. So I don't know who this guy is. I can agree with what Gary says without endorsing the way in which he treats people. Well, again, I, I, there's only one thing in this world, again, that has any meaning, should have any real value or meaning to you, and that's the arguments. You either value arguments or you don't. Right, I don't agree with absolutely every one of those things, such as his belief that people are basically rational. So that wasn't even part of the list. So he doesn't believe that people are basically rational, that most people will add two and two correct, that if you spell something out, they can get it. And, you know, it's even like making the argument about the economy. Yes, people want to believe it's okay, okay, that... You know, the government's deficit spending. Well, that's no different than me having a house mortgage or some sort of argument like that. But if I explain to them how, you know, a house mortgage would be like $2 trillion worth of debt, not $40 trillion. <laughs> $40 trillion is an insane amount of debt. 
Yeah. I mean, you can explain things to people, and they are basically rational. The brain is made to get the right answer. It's not made to get wrong answers. And clearly, just a bunch of fake beliefs and unicorns and gods and crystals and all the little wooey astrology stuff, all kinds of silly ideas that hope will win all, love conquers all. I mean, there's people that actually believe this kind of crap. If I have a positive mental attitude, I won't get cancer. They believe all kinds of absolute horseshit. And that's the only thing in the way, assholes. Oh, anyway. Basically, rational in his um, overconfidence in declaring that life didn't evolve anywhere else in the universe. Again, so I don't have any overconfidence beyond the fact that the the what you're saying is possible is so dauntingly improbable that how can you say it as even being a possibility? I mean, you could point out just how the path we have taken. It's like, I, I've given the example, it's like somebody winning the lottery and then buying another ticket, just one ticket in another lottery and winning that lottery, and then just buying one ticket in another lottery and winning that lottery. Now, there have been people who have won two lotteries in a row, but they spent half the money they won in the first lottery on tickets in the second lottery. So, obviously, they really increased their odds of winning the second one because they bought half the available tickets. But, you know, so, so I, I mean, you're just impervious to reasoning if you don't accept the fact that life is not a thing that just poofs. That a reproducing uh, a piece of DNA doesn't just poof. That uh, all the chemistry required to cut it and replicate it doesn't just poof. That the membranes don't just poof. That the whole scenario of the arrangement being created doesn't just poof. That it requires an extremely unlikely event. Again, we can't, I can't, you think you could like take a really small human being, a really small one, and we'll shove him in my mouth, you know, force feed me, and he'll live inside my stomach, and he'll figure out a way to survive. What do you think the odds against that are? But that's what had to happen in cellular development. Somehow a cell had to get eaten by another cell, and it had to live in there and survive. Yeah. All right, anyway, there's no point in arguing with these people. Uh, regarding objective morals, I think that this is a matter of semantics. Well. It, there's nothing semantic about it. I mean, you either believe that there is something here to observe that's going on, and that you can recognize that flashlight, okay, it's interesting, it's got a deep, kind of a neat shape, and it does a little lighty thing, is very different than bunny rabbit, right? So if I had a little rabbit in my hand, or a mouse, that you could understand that, yeah, the mouse has blinky eyes, and <laughs> it has little paws, it can wave, and, you know, it can lick you with its little tongue, it makes little poos, it does some interesting little things that are like flashlight. But your knowledge is that it also does this feeling thing, like inside its little brain it's having sensations, you know, little horny feelings and little yummy feelings and then you know, horrible feelings and pain and smashed toe feelings. And, and you can't tell the difference between mouse and flashlight? that we just can sit here as observers and say, I can understand the huge difference between these two things. When I'm conscious, I've tasted consciousness, I know what it is. That's hugely different than just making light. Huge difference. Um, anyway. Suffering is a universal bad, but does not exist outside of consciousness. <clears throat> so what? Consciousness doesn't exist outside of vessels carrying it, retard. <laughs> so it doesn't quite meet the strict technical definition of objective. Well, you're technically stupid then. It happens in brains. I guess you don't really understand that. That consciousness just happens in brains. Neurons have to create the theater. There's no theater without the billions of neurons. Uh, but it is as good as objective because it is a universal intrinsic bad, and it is bad by definition. Well, you can't say both the sentences. You're saying you're contradicting yourself. So you're pretty fucking stupid. From the fact that suffering is universally bad, you said it four times, but you didn't prove it with any arguments, but okay. One can derive the principle that one ought not to squander it. Yes, quite obviously, that can be understood once you've declared that it is, yes, bad. And no reasonable person can disagree. Only the unreasonably stupid and insane think suffering is good. Uh, in and of itself. 
I tend to make pretty much the same argument as Gary, but <clears throat> avoid using the word objective. Why? I mean, they're saying that all sensations are subjective. I'm pointing out that sensation itself is an objective fact taking place in the universe. Yes, what we what we declare valuable, like a flashlight, because it helps me not fall down in the dark, and, and that's good because I don't get hurted as much. I don't get hurted as much if I use flashlight. So flashlight becomes an extension that we can say is good. Flashlight good because it prevents harm. <clears throat> but it's only good because it prevents harm. Okay, it's not intrinsically good, but harm is intrinsically bad. So yes, that's the appropriate use of the word. In order to avoid getting bogged down in semantics. Well, there is no semantics. There is evidence. And I'm just saying we all are doing the experiment. And you're saying that because the experiment is conducted internally, okay, I mean, I can't see your experiment. You can't see my experiment. I can't see his conscious experiment. We all can't see each other's experiment. But let's not pretend the experiment is any different. That would be just playing a silly game. The basic experiment is the same. Yes, little subtle things are different. Your headaches are a little like my my stub toes, and you know my anxiety is like uh, your cancer. I mean, you know, we can have different uh, sensitivities and all that kind of crap, but the basic function is the same among all the sentient organisms. And only a psychotic, crazy organism would say nail in the eye, same thing as cupcake. So it's just a bullshit conversation. You're just endorsing more bullshit, fuckhead. With this, this goop that somehow I've said it the wrong way. I haven't said any of this the wrong way, you dumbass. <clears throat> okay, everyone knows how Amendum is like. He didn't want to get into spar. That pus shouldn't have brought irrelevant crap just because someone moaned to him beforehand in the private messages. Well, I don't know what crap he brought up. I'm just saying that I was there to talk about antinatalism and ephilism, and he was there to talk about any other subject possible because he says both of those are futile, that we can't accomplish these tasks, that this will not happen. That's his prediction for the future. And I say his prediction is based on no evidence and is just made up horseshit in his fucking deluded head. And that's the fact. There's absolutely no reason to be pessimistic about this cause. None whatsoever. You have to just ignore all the facts that are surrounding you right now. And again, right now with this whole coronavirus hysteria, it's becoming clearer and clearer to people how vulnerable they are, how shitty this game is, how unfair it is, how deserve has nothing to do with it. All of these facts are becoming clearer and clearer every fucking day. So, um, bullshit to this argument, it can't happen. People can't be as smart as me and figure out that life is suck. This is what their argument is. Their argument is, I had to be really smart to figure out that life sucks. I mean, it's a pathetically stupid argument. No, it's the default state. And the reason why people don't figure it out is because from the day they're born, they're propagandized by a bunch of lollipop bullshit happily ever after little dwarfy Bambi-esque bullshit. Well, Bambi is probably a bad example because frankly, I think every kid should see Bambi because if that'll scare the fuck out of you. <laughs> this is life. Life is what? Death. <laughs> yeah, that's what Bambi basically teaches you. Horror and death. Uh, over and over again. Well, fuck that. Fuck burning the forest down and, and you know, over and over again. Who needs this shit? What kind of asshole, you know, births babies into the, the burning cinders, <laughs> you know, just to do it all over again? Yes, only an asshole. All right, well, it's more turtle crap. I agree with you that I'm not sure whether it's <clears throat> objectively is even whether this objectivity is even necessary. Well, it's necessary in terms of if somebody's going to slander it as being subjective, as just being something by personal bias. There's nothing bias in the declaration that sentience produces the two different sensations of positive and negative. That is not subjective bias. I am not being subjectively biased in my capacity to sense pain and pleasure. 
a moral nihilist still needs morality in a practical sense. Well, that doesn't even make any sense. So, it's, what's, what the fuck does that mean? Practical morality. Practical value. No, practical value has nothing to do with it. So, again, this is just more of these Darwinian ass wipes who think I should go to nature to figure out what's valuable. When nature uh, lays eggs, you know, on the head of another animal and has them eaten to death by the, the maggots. Where, where nature enslaves organisms all over the place, where nature kills 5,000 babies to make one adult. Why would I go to nature for my values, to understand what has value or what my objective here on earth is? And that would be stupid. That would be as stupid as saying, because I have a penis, I can rape women. That's retarded. Okay, but then the next best thing you have is universe or consensus <laughs> and well obviously consensus is meaningless there are arguments there's arguments that are rationally solid and then there's arguments that are irrational shit and I'm making the distinction between irrational shit God arguments and rational scientific arguments and that cannot really be a rational basis for our moral values. So you, you just love saying moral values. Why would you keep using the word moral? You've written it like seven times in here. Obviously, I, if you're going to be talking about me, you should be recognizing the simple truth that I have said that's a bullshit word. This has nothing to do with any dogmatic morality. This has to do with just looking at the world and saying, what can I discern? What can I see? Where can I see value? And so all you have to do is look inside yourself for four seconds and you can see lots of it. Okay. Although with pain and pleasure, I intuitively agree that this is a universal. So again, you know, they're so desperate to play their word games. You know, oh, well, I can see the argument is kind of indestructible, but I'll keep pretending I destroyed it. Uh, just... You just, oh, all right, well, I'll end there. I mean, this goes on and on again, so fuck it. Oh, well, he says Darwinian. There we go. Okay, so I might as well keep reading. This would probably be a good one. Or you could make an argument like Sam Harris does, I think. I've never read his book. So there, you don't, you, you, you know, you, you won't get this right. Um, and say that objective validity of moral value somehow derives from their functionality in running society. Lie. He has a simple notion. You thrive or you don't. And by thrive, meaning that you maximize the positive feelings and avoid horrific negatives. But he clearly, in the, in the value landscape, in the moral landscape, he's making the clear argument that we all know there are lives we would not want to live. Just a fact. There are horrible, awful, torturous things that happen. And we would not exist if we knew that's what we had to do to do it. Okay, but then it also becomes difficult because how do you measure this performance or functionality? Well, the trap is is that, yes, a bunch of people are testifying that it's fun to die when they haven't died yet, right? So there's a bunch of pro-lifers telling us it's all worth it when they haven't had to take those last steps into the shit. Uh, you know, they haven't had to get their cancer and die. And yet they're telling us all just, oh, it's great fun. It's all worth it. All one big amusement park fun ride. Um, if it leads you to extinction, it certainly can't be said to be functional in a Darwinian or a competitive sense. So again, who cares? What, what rational, what intelligent person thinks I go to evolution to describe what means something or what's valuable? Of course not. I mean, obviously, the winners in evolution are insidious. I mean, there's bird that's, you know, kicks the eggs out of the nest and lays their own and forces some other bird to be a slave to their prodigy. These are all evil things. They're not the God. They're obviously evil things to do. Murder children, you know. You can't figure that out? That That's probably not a... You don't go to Freddy Krueger's house to find out what a good idea is? <laughs> Shit. I think we would do good to get away from the focus on hedonism and instead take up where Benatar led. Benatar's not leading anywhere. Oh, Christ. I mean, really, you know, fine. I, I, you know, let's make, uh, you know, uh, something simple really complicated. 
the the fact is is that there are no real goods there's just eliminations of bad so 99.9 percent .9 of anything you could describe as a good event is a good event because the opposite is a bad event anything less than that is a bad event so it's only stopping the bad that ends up being the good okay led to a view independent of hedonism well, i don't see how it could possibly be independent of it when it's recognizing the fact that there is a huge distinction between good and bad but anyway and focus more on the axiological asymmetry and the uh consent imposition argument well where does he do that that's interesting i don't remember that being in benatar's book at all um, uh, but that's just my opinion. Uh, well, you're pretty stupid. Obviously, I think the consent argument is huge <clears throat> because without consent, you have to prove that there's good reason to procreate. You have to demonstrate you have good reason to think the risk isn't um, excessive or burdensome or something you need to justify. And of course, I would argue that you can't do that um, you can't demonstrate how you have insurance against failure, that you can make it all right when you give your son cancer, that you can make it all all right somehow. You won't be able to make it all all right. You won't be able to fix it. Um, <laughs> and, um, uh, well, whatever. There's no point in going any further than that, actually. So, anyway, fuck these turds. Let's see what this asshole says. Well, anyway, I think doing so would free us from the whole value argument. So he's saying that Benatar isn't making a value argument. I mean, this is just too stupid. He has the words good and bad in the book thousands and thousands of times. Oh, God damn. And from empirically having to prove somehow that there is more bad than good in the majority of lives. Well, that's sort of what Benatar is sort of arguing, is that the good is feeble in its power. It doesn't have any power without the power of bad. Bad is the only real thing. And so all you're sacrificing when you sacrifice existing is creating a bunch of bad. Because the good doesn't mean anything. Okay, we have to hammer home the <clears throat> distinction Benatar made. Well, I'm sorry, he doesn't really make a distinction. He's basically just saying what I just said. Um, and that's all that's there is that you can't lose something that doesn't really have any value. You're, we're, we're always, we need life. Life isn't good. We just need it. We have this perception of need. I need to live another day. I feel it right now that I need to live another day. I feel it. It doesn't exist as a fact in the universe. It just exists as a notion in my head. A notion in my head isn't something that can compensate for torture. No point. Ugh, people are just way too stupid. Uh, editing, blah, blah, blah. Okay, that's not really usefully meaningful, so we'll end it there. Sorry, a two hour video or something. It's preposterously long. But um, these accusations keep coming up. They're just completely unevidenced. These people are just sacks of shit lying fuckers. And instead of rewarding these assholes, right? This thing called the anti-natalist community. I think you're all just a, all bullshitters. You're all full of shit. You really don't get the agenda at all because you're looking for ways of running away from what it means all over the place. You're just such lame ass pieces of useless shit. <laughs> Frankly, whiny little bitches. You, you know, you got nothing to say about anything. You're just saying, I'm in pain. I want, I need. Is that all you're saying? Because if you really gave a shit about the goddamn victims, you wouldn't be distracted by pigs in space stories. You really wouldn't. Alright. Thank you very much. Till the next time and such.